Hey guys, uh, my name is Rajat and I'm a technical marketing engineer. Um, I'm going to demo two things to you. In the first demo, I'm actually going to set up Mobility Express, which is sitting right here on the table. And for the second part of the demo, I'm going to log in into one of the Mobility Express setups that we have in the lab. And I'm going to go over the day one screens and whatnot. So um, just to, if I can have your attention on the table, what I have here is a typical small site setup. I have an 800 series router, which has um, uh, for WAN connectivity. Uh, it's connected to a complex switch. And to the complex switch, I have an access point, 1850 access point, running the Mobility Express image on it. So uh, it's connected to the switch via the PoE port. It gets the power. And um, right now, the controller is up and running. So once the controller is up and running, as Brian said, it's going to broadcast the Cisco Air Provision SSID. So if I can have, a, have your attention on the TV, let me just show you. So what I've done is I've, I'm actually connected to the Cisco Air Provision SSID I'm right here. And once I'm connected to it, my laptop is going to get an IP address. Uh, 192.168.1.142 is what I have right now. So once, I, once I'm connected, the next step is basically to log into the setup wizard. And the way to do it is um, you open up the browser, you type in 192.168.1.1, and you're presented with the setup wizard. This wizard is UI driven, which means the UI will kind of tell the user what to do. So the first step is to basically set up the admin account. So I'm going to go ahead and set up the admin account. The functionality on the, on the ME. Is it running DHCP services and NAT services and everything, or is that coming off the router? It is running DHCP service for day zero. Okay. But for day one, uh, you have to have DHCP service off the router. Okay. Yeah. All right, so once we start the setup, the first thing that we need to do is set up the controller. So obviously, we set up the system name, so let's just call it ME. Uh, country is US, but you know there is a drop-down menu, and you can select a different country if you wanted to. The date, date and time is pre-populated from your browser, so it's there. Uh, but if you had an NTP server, you could actually provision it. Uh, but for now, I'll just use the time that I got from the browser. Management IP address. So this is the IP address of the Mobility Express controller. So let's just call it 10.10.10.10. .10 and then the default gateway. All right, so the next step. So once I'm done with the um, uh, IP information, the next step is to basically create the wireless network. So we have an option to create the employee network and the guest network. So let's just call it employee for the employee network. For the security type, we have two options, WPA2 personal and WPA2 enterprise. If we select WPA2 enterprise, we can specify the IP address of the radius, radius server. For the demo, we will basically Use WPA2 personal. So let me just specify the paraphrase. All right, so the next thing is VLAN. So either I can use the management VLAN or I can specify another VLAN if I, if, if I had to. And then I can specify the VLAN ID here. So let's, for the demo, let's just use management VLAN. At day zero, I can also provision the guest network. So same thing, you know, you, you come here and you can specify the network name for the guest network, uh, choose the security, either to be web consent or WPA2 personal. Uh, if I had a separate VLAN for the guest network, I could come here and select it, or I could just point it to the employee VLAN. So I'll disable that because we don't need to set up the guest network for now. Click Next. And the third step, or which is, and the last step, is to enable the RF parameter optimization if I wanted to. So by default, as you can see, the client density is set to typical, um, but I could change it to low or high if I wanted to. And uh, the traffic type is data or data invoice. So with this, what happens is at the back, you know, we will optimize some of the RF parameters uh, based on the client density and the traffic type that the user selects. Um, and you click next. So when so now, as you can see, I'm pretty much done with my setup. Um, I'm presented with the confirmation page, uh, sort of verifying the settings. Uh, I hit, up, hit apply, and it says that the controller will basically reboot, um, or the system will reboot and come, up back, come back up as a controller. Is there any differences in WLC functionality between the 30 and the 50? No. So as you can see, uh, it's a, uh, the Setup wizard is really simple. Anybody can set it up. Three steps. 
If you're an expert, probably it'll take, it'll take you less than two minutes. If you're a novice, you know, it's a UI-driven visit, so it'll probably take you a few minutes. And we enable, as Brian said, we enable the best practices by default, so user doesn't really have to think about what RF parameters I need to set and whatnot. It's all taken care of. So it's also easy to, uh, to change it after all. Oh, for example, first you choose for, for data, and after all you will choose uh, for data and voice. Right. Is there all the other nerd knobs we've grown to know and love hidden sorry, someplace? I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you. Are all the other nerd knobs that we love someplace else we can get access to? So I will show you the day one piece as well. So the next thing is to basically log into an existing setup. So there are some knobs there, but um, uh, we don't really expose a lot of knobs from the UI4 Mobility Express because we want to keep it simple. Uh, it's for small to medium businesses. Uh, you know, they may or may not have an IT staff which has Mobility Express or mobility or wireless knowledge. So uh, with that in mind, you know, the idea with Mobility Express is to keep it really simple. Quick. For those that are used to the CLI, though, it would be acceptable to defer that question to the folks that are CLI comfortable and say, Yes. The nerd knobs that you like and know and love are still there at uh, CLI. Are they? So CLI capability is there. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Also, a quick question. What's the minimal iOS for this? Or AirOS? Or? A.1 MR2. Okay. Yeah. All right. So um, if there are no more questions on the initial setup, I will log into one of the setups that we have in the lab, uh, the Mobility Express setups. So let's log in. As you can see, it's got a different IP. So I'm logged into one of the um, uh, into the controller controller, and uh, once I log in, I'm presented. Or by default, I go to the monitoring dashboard, which shows me the network summary. I can see the number of wireless networks, access points, active clients, and whatnot. I can see the access points by usage, and obviously these are available in tabular as well as you know graphical form. Um, I can look at the operating systems. So in the lab, I have a Microsoft workstation and an Apple TV connected to this Mobility Express network. Um, we have application visibility enabled on WLANs by default. So you know we can sort of see what applications are being browsed. Um, clients, the list of clients that are connected. Well, in this case, it's all. And of course, the top WLANs. So this page sort of it's similar to what we introduced in A.1. And um, you know, it kind of gives you an overview of your network. Let's click on access points. So as Brian said, Mobility Express, even though it's running on 1850s or 1830s, it can manage other access points as well. So the 2700s, the 7, 1700s, the, the, the 3700. So what I have here is a list of different access points. And as you can see, I have a uh, 1702, 3602, 1852. So I have other access points as well. So let's click on one of them, and um, let's just see if we can. All right, oh, let's just go here. OK. So this is a 2700 access point, and um, I can see the general parameters, the IP address, the MAC address, uh, the model. Um, if I want to see the performance summary for the two radios, uh, you know, I can look at the screen on the right. Um, I can look. With the admin status is enabled, of course. Uh, we, look, we can look at uh, neighbor and rogue APs. If the AP is client air capable, sorry, clean air capable, uh, we can actually get some of the clean air uh, information as well. <coughs> the next thing that I want to show you is the best practice, and this is a thing that I want you guys to remember: is that on Mobility Express, we enable most of the best practices by default. So we don't really want uh, the user to sort of uh, determine, oh, what is really best for me. So we uh, on Mobility Express, we are enabling most of the best practices. So application visibility is enabled by default, local profiling, NTP. So in my lab setup, uh, I have an NTP server. Um, so you know, I can click on it, and it will take me to an NTP screen. So let's just go back to best practices. Same thing for security. Um, um, you know, we enable rogue policies, uh, SSH telnet access to the controller, um, client exclusion, and whatnot. For RF uh, management as well, we have a high SSID count. Um, so obviously, I have more than four S um, uh, SSIDs, and hence it's disabled. But I can reduce it to less than four, and then 
this will show up as enabled. Can you also monitor the, the, the small cell module into the, the uh, 3700? Uh, not through here. Okay. Yeah, that, that's a, that goes back to a different appliance to manage the small cell module. Okay. All right, so let's take a look at the wireless settings. Um, um, so quickly, I want to show you the WLAN page. Uh, if I wanted to add a new WLAN, I can click on Add WLAN. Um, I can enter the profile name, the SSID, and what you would notice is that we enable the admin state by default. Um, and radio policy is set to all, but if we wanted to, we could select one of these options here. For WLAN security, though on Mobility Express, we do support open WP2 personal, WP2 enterprise, and guest. Uh, for, en for enterprise, the option is to select an external radius. If you had one, then you would specify the IP address of the external radius, or you can choose an internal AP. If you wanted this uh, WLAN to be on a specific uh, VLAN, you could come here, enable VLAN tagging, and specify the VLAN ID. You can specify some of the ACL rules by enabling firewall. Under the QoS, we have um, the different, um, I guess, policies uh, that are enforced by these selections. By default, it's set to gold at the moment, and application visibility is also enabled by default. So you know you, your charts on the morning page are populated. Access points. So, so this is one of the things that is different than other controllers, which you, you guys may want to look at. Um, so by default, this screen kind of shows you all the access points that are there in the network. The previous access point screen was the monitoring screen, and this is more like the uh, provisioning screen. So the first access point with the P is the one that is running the Mobility Express controller function. Um, and the rest of the access points are um, you know, just simple access points. So if I click on Edit, um, one of the things to notice here is that the operating mode is AP and controller, which means that this is the access point which is running as an access point as well as a controller function. And um, you know there are some general parameters like IP configuration, IP address, location, AP name, and whatnot. On this AP, because it is running the controller function, one would see the controller tab as well. And here, if I wanted to change the IP address of the controller, I could come here and change that. I could change the country if I wanted to. Then we have two tabs for the radios. Um, the admin state is enabled. And here, from here, we can basically change these parameters like the, the channel or the transmit power. Same thing for the AC radio, A and an AC radio. For the guest access, um, we can click on the guest WLANs and here we can provide the redirect URL. We can sort of provide some of the page headlines and the page message that we want the guest to see. Uh, so if there's a guest user and they're trying to connect to the guest WLAN, uh, these are the um, the, this is the configuration that will apply. Yeah, just, don't do it. just two more things I want to show you. One is the management access, and as I said before, um, by default we enable HTTPS and SSH, and we disable HTTP and Telnet to the controller. But if one wanted to have a different management access, they can come here and, and, and change it. The last thing that I want to show you is we can look at the system information and um, you know, it's, it's saying it's Mobility Express, it's running on an 1852, the software version it is running, for how many days it's been running, and max access point supported is 25. So as Brian said, there is no license requirement for Mobility Express. When you buy uh, an 1850 running Mobility Express, it will support up to 25 access points.